being the CEO of a pest control business is no joke. It is a very, very difficult thing to do. I mean, how many of you guys are owners out here? And how many of you owners are actually CEOs of your own business? All right, so you, you see the problem that we have, right? So number one, I've got a bunch of unqualified CEOs with the audacity to actually appoint themselves as CEOs of their own businesses, right? And so we've got bad decision after bad decision. I, I guess the price was right, right? You had a pulse, your salary and compensation requirements were very low, so you got the job. But it's a, it is a very difficult position to have. But you know, one of the things I've learned over the years is that it is, it's extremely learnable. No one is born a CEO, and I've seen some very successful morons out there, and I've also seen some extremely brilliant people just not do it right. So what I'm going to talk about is a few things that I've learned, and you know, when you, when you consult the management literature on the role of a CEO, and I've actually said this on the buzz before, the role of a CEO is to set strategy and organize the resources and capabilities of the firm. And while that is 100% correct, it's also useless, because what the fuck does it mean, right? So your job is to set strategy, and we're going to talk about that. And it's also to organize the resources and the capabilities of the firm. And I think the first part of setting strategy for me is really learning how to ask the right questions. And I know that sounds cliche, but I talk to guys like you every single day and I've done it forever. And I've sat down with the likes of Andy Ransom and Gary Rollins all the way down to the guy that owned, started the pest control business two weeks ago. And most business owners really want the quick fix. Right? They want, tell me the tactics, what do I need to do? I want to double my sales, like what, what do I need? SEO, hire sales guys, what do I need to do? And, one of the things I've learned over the years is that some of the most brilliant CEOs ask very, very different questions. They ask questions like, instead of saying, how do I double my sales, the question would be, why is my sales not growing at such and such a rate? They're diagnosticians. At the end of the day, they attempt to diagnose what the obstacle is. Because as a CEO, your job is understanding where you are today, which is point A, and then ultimately getting you to point B. And clearly there's a gap, right? There's a gap, there's a difference between A and B, otherwise you would actually be at B. And so understanding what that obstacle is and really diagnosing what the problems are in your organization is job number one. One of my first jobs was with a company called American Capital, which is a private equity firm, and, at the time, and he's gonna make fun of this too. Um, it was the largest publicly traded private equity firm in the United States at the time. And I was a young guy in my early 20s, and our job was to go out and make investments in privately held businesses, grow them, turn them around. And I remember we had a, every year we would do one of these big all hands conferences. They would fly the whole firm in from all over the place, put us at a great hotel. And I remember one, the first one they did, and I remember it particularly well, it was almost 25 years ago, it was at the Peninsula Hotel in Chicago that had just opened up at the time, a very swanky place. And I, rem I remember this place, it was the first time in my life that I've ever gotten a professional massage. Like we roll into this joint, they said, hey, use the spa, get a massage. So I went in, so I'm gonna get a massage. And I loved it, it was great. It, the ending was different than I suspected it would be. <laughs> but, let, you filthy animals, they said it was an hour, it lasted 50 minutes, and you guys are laughing, come on. <laughs> so I had the massage, but the CEO, Milan Wokis, who is a billionaire multiple times over, sat down with all of us and said, we need to have an edge. And I thought, what kind of edge do we need? We borrow money, buy companies, turn around, sell them, what do we need to do? Now, we need to have an edge, and our edge needs, we need to focus on people. One of the most important jobs of a CEO is understanding how to hire, coach, retain brilliant people. And so we need to figure this out and do a better job with it. I said, okay. So he pointed at me, I was part of the Chicago office, and he pointed at me and the managing director there, and I was just a kid, I was like 23 years old at the time, and he said, you guys are gonna meet with a guy named Jeff Smart. Now, are you guys familiar with top grading? Any of you guys have heard of that? 
So Jeff Smart was a organizational psychologist. His father wrote the book Top Grading. Back in those days, he was in the late 20s, just, got, just gotten a PhD. He came in to meet with us and talked about how we as a private equity firm can have an edge in hiring people. And I remember he was like this nerdy looking professor guy. It was back when Starbucks has just started selling these big coffees. I remember like the coffee cup was almost as big as he was. He carried this thing, glasses, and sat down with us and actually had a very, very interesting discussion. And it was in those days where I started to think about the fact that, you know, you could be like Henry Ford and build a company with any old folks, like ordinary, everyday people. And you can build a very successful company doing that, but it takes a tremendous amount of managerial resources and capabilities to keep the wheels on. Um, oftentimes, you're far better served by going out and finding people who are far more brilliant and capable than you are. And I think as CEOs, it's very hard for us to admit that we suck at most things. I mean, we all have a tremendous amount of overconfidence problems. I know that I do. And by the way, just by very definition, the fact that you have no experience decided to appoint yourself as CEO of this brand new company, even though you really shouldn't be the CEO, just proves the point, right? I mean, entrepreneurs are extremely op you know, optimistic. So we have to get in, in the idea here of really going out and finding people. You know, A players don't need motivation. You know, if you think about, think about the brilliant A, straight-A students. Those are the dudes that were waiting for the report card to come out. The C students didn't want the report card to come out. It was the A students. They wanted to like, get these grades out here because I'm going to put this in your face. I'm, you guys get the point here. And so hiring people who are brilliant, who are better than you, is probably one of your number one jobs as CEO. And I bring this up because over the last 20 years, when I think about patterns that I've seen, some of the most successful companies in our industry and other industries are run by CEOs that actually are not threatened. They're not concerned of having people that are far more capable of them in their organization. They actually relish that. People who are motivated, that are A players, they don't need incentive structures. They don't need any, they need challenges. These are the people that come to you with solutions and not come to you with problems. And, you know, I learned this. I'm glad the Mexican's here because I'll have, I'm going to do a public mea culpa. You want this? It's on video, Mexican. Our firm over the years has grown, and we had a manager who was one of my first employees and had been around with us for a long, long time. She grew into a position that she was not qualified to be in. Great person, but just not the right person for the position. And me being a very, very bad manager resisted relieving her of her duty, which was not only the wrong thing for her, it was the wrong thing for the team. I let the team down. Um, I didn't do my job as CEO. Um, ultimately, after she was relieved from her duty, we were able to replace her, a C player, with an A player that has, I don't know, turned that division around dramatically, night and day. So I bring this up because it is hard to do. I mean, I can see it happening over and over and over again, but it, it's easy for us to talk about this shit. It's hard to actually do it, especially when you're in the position of being a CEO. But when you think about employees, I'm not going to be able to tell you how to hire the right ones. There's a lot of resources for that. It's a recurring theme that I think is extremely important, learning how to find these people, assess whether or not they're A players, and put them in the right place in your organization, because it makes scant sense to spend all this time and money to design this machine, your pest control business, and then put some more on in the driver's seat, right? Thank you.